The U.S. Army plant in Scranton, Pennsylvania that specializes in artillery ammunition caught fire, according to local media reports and eyewitnesses, local emergency services were summoned to deal with what was described as a structure fire. The Joint Munitions Command Facility is owned by the U.S. military but operated by General Dynamics Ordnance and Tactical Systems. It makes 155mm and 105mm artillery projectiles, 120mm mortar rounds, 203mm naval shells, as well as a variety of smoke, illumination, and incendiary rounds. The US has been trying to ramp up production of artillery ammunition to supply Ukraine for its conflict with Russia. Scranton is a community of about 75,000 residents in northeastern Pennsylvania. It is the birthplace of US President Joe Biden. The Scranton Army Ammunition Plant has been the leading source of U.S. joint large-caliber artillery metal parts for more than 60 years. Artillery shells are produced there, then shipped to another government facility in Iowa for explosive filling before being brought into the Army inventory. The Army's strategy was to modernize the Scranton facility infrastructure and production capabilities by capitalizing on state-of-the-art manufacturing equipment and technologies while maintaining the same level of hardware production. The Russian invasion of Ukraine completely changed the dynamics of the 155mm high-explosive munitions. Production strategy at the plant and its modernization pace, the demands of the Ukrainian battlefield generated an urgent need for increasing production and accelerating modernization efforts in Scranton. Mysterious Ukrainian drones destroy Russian air defense. New weapon was called Ukrainian Lancets. Ukraine has long-range drones destroying Russian mobile air defense systems, Forbes reported. It is noted that the new weapons were called Ukrainian Lancets since they are similar to Russian UAVs. The increased range of the drones allows for many new targets to be hit and the Ukrainians take advantage by attacking expensive equipment before the Russians can move it to a safe place. The new drone was first mentioned in a Telegram post on the official channel of the Kortizia Operational Strategic Group fighting in Ukraine's eastern front. As a result of aerial reconnaissance in the area of the settlement of Zoria, the enemy's 2S6 Tunguska air defense system was detected. A Ram-X loitering munition was launched at the detected target. As a result of fire damage, the detected target was critically damaged. The article reads, Several more strikes from the same type of munitions appear in a new compilation video from the Ukrainian army showing the destruction of various air defense systems. Two Buck launcher vehicles, a Buck radar vehicle, two TOR systems, a Strela 10 and a different Tunguska the like. These expensive assets will be difficult or impossible to replace in wartime. Another video from April the 10th shows a successful strike on a Russian mobile Borisoglebsk 2 electronic warfare system which clearly failed to either jam the attack drone or the scout drone filming the strike. There are some interesting points here. The authors of the article note. One is that the Tunguska, a tracked air defense system with twin 30 mm cannon, four surface to air missiles and its own integrated radar, which is supposed to shoot down drones, was tracked and destroyed by Ukrainian drones. Another point is the name of the drone. Ram X implies an upgraded version of the Ram 2 loitering munition made by Ukrainian company CDET. The company produces the extremely successful Leleka 100 reconnaissance drone, which has a wingspan of 3 meters and endurance of more than 2 hours, making it a valuable asset. In addition, the video of the defeats of Russian weapons practically does not show the drone itself, which attacks it. Unlike the Lancet, which is easily identifiable in attack videos from its distinctive white silhouette with double X wings, the Ram X is much harder to spot. Russia and China are uniting against NATO, demanding that the alliance leave Asia. Moscow and Beijing's top diplomats accuse NATO of seeking ways to enter the Asia-Pacific and warned the transatlantic alliance against stretching its hand to our common home. According to Newsweek, at the press conference following his meeting with Chinese counterpart Wang Yi, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also said that the two had mooted a new security architecture in Eurasia as Euro-Atlantic mechanisms continue to decay and destroy themselves. Beijing views the prospect of NATO, a Western military alliance, extending its reach into Asia as a direct challenge to its regional influence as well as security concerns. It is also concerned 
about encirclement, a fear already shared by Russian President Vladimir Putin, who cited alleged NATO encroachment as a justification for launching his invasion of Ukraine. We have talked a lot about the need to ensure security and stability in the Asia-Pacific region, where the US continues to pursue a policy of private military and political alliances with limited membership that are clearly directed against China and Russia. Lavrov said, he said the US and its allies also are promoting their bloc-based approaches here, particularly emphasizing the need for the North Atlantic Alliance to enter the region. In their meeting, Wang had proposed a policy of dual opposition to Western obstruction of a multipolar world order and democratization and justice, according to Lavrov. Any remarks or deeds that cause division or add up to confrontation are not welcome in the Asia-Pacific, and they have no future. Wang told reporters. Wang said both countries also oppose hegemonism, power politics, and monopolies on global affairs by only a few nations, according to a Chinese foreign ministry readout. Since the 2022 invasion of Ukraine, Russia has been moving ever closer to China, which has provided its neighbor an economic lifeline to help it weather the West's crushing sanctions in retaliation for the war.